right. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Good evening, Good evening, ma'am. Good evening, ma'am. Good evening, ma'am. Well, good evening, everybody. Good evening. It's so good to see so many faces. How is everyone doing? Fine, ma'am. Thank you. Good Thank you. Ma Thank you, ma'am. Thank you for asking. Awesome. Doing good. All right. You don't have to call me, ma'am. My name Fine, is Namita. For those of you who do not know me, I go by Elizabeth. Um, I work and live in Canada with my family. I would love to get to know each one of you, but because of the time constraints, I guess I'll go ahead and start straight into our session. Please bear with me while I share my screen, okay? All right. Can everyone okay. see my screen? Yes. 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 Awesome. Yes, All right. So I'll go ahead and get started. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to stop me or unmute your mic and ask any questions that you may like. I may not necessarily see your chats because um, I am using only one desktop. Uh, I can only see my screen share. So if you have any questions, please feel, to, feel free to interrupt me. Okay, so today we'll specifically be speaking about OET speaking um, with a focus on role plays. So I don't want any of you to consider this just as an OET speaking session, but I also want this to be considered as a professional development because all of us are dreaming or working towards going into a different country, I hope so. So um, this consider this as a professional development to help you um, go and be stars in the place where you are, okay? So I'll be mainly dealing with some of the mannerisms and usages that the native speakers would use and that will help you to blend with the community and to be able to speak to those people freely. So I will move on to my next slide. Let's start with a warm up session. What I want you to do is read the passage that you see here in your mind. I will give you exactly 10 seconds to read it in your mind. Let's start now. All right, I hope that's good enough time to go through that small passage in your mind. And right now, what I want you to do again is to talk about this loudly. You have to read it loud. You don't have to necessarily unmute your microphone. Please remain muted, but read it loud. That's going to be another 30 seconds that I'm going to give you to read this passage loud. Seven more seconds. All right, that is the end of it. The reason why I wanted each of you to read it out loud is because reading something in mind is totally different from speaking it out loud. And that is a very important part of speaking session in OET the way we pronounce these words, the way we uh, create pauses in between our conversations, the way we stress these different words is all very important when it comes to OED speaking so that we are able to clearly communicate what we mean to communicate to the examiner or the patient in this case. 
Okay, so what I wanted to do is if any of you that hasn't started uh, practicing or are doing it today, because thinking of it in mind is totally different from speaking it out loud. So many of you may be already doing this, but for those of you that are beginners, please make sure that you are practicing your speaking by speaking it out loud. Okay, talking is the role. Your medical knowledge is irrelevant here. What matters is you listen and you speak and you repeat. So there are three main components to our test. I'm gonna go ahead and talk about each of these in detail. The first part is understanding the setting, going into understanding the background and understanding the task. I hope each of you are familiar with the OED speaking test and the, um, the format of the test. First, let's start with understanding the setting. So this is how an OET candidate cue card would look like. This is just the beginning part of it. I will be only talking about understanding the setting now. So can any of you tell me what is a setting? Home visit. Home, home visit. The home visit. Home visit. Home visit. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. In this case, the setting home is visit. home visit, but in general, the setting is the situation that your conversation is happening, right? Where your conversation is happening is the setting. So in this case, it's a home visit. So I want you to imagine the home visit right now. Just think that you're in a house. I want you to imagine what you're seeing. Can someone quickly tell me a couple of things that you're seeing in a house? Greet the family. Uh, yeah, that is what you're going to do, right? What I want to know is what you see in the house. Say, for example, I am in the house. I see the kitchen. I see the patient's pet cat running around. Those kind of things. Can you imagine you're in the house and tell me what you see? Um, when, as well as I enter into the home, I can see that, uh, that 60 year old uh, woman or a man, maybe knee replacement, maybe he's lying down, um, on a bed and, uh, maybe, uh, the walker is uh, uh, right behind his side, but not, he's not using for his daily living activities and he's afraid to use, maybe he will fall down or maybe he will some problems and, uh, we have to uh ensure the patient that maybe she or he will use the walker and it will ease his all um uh all his uh problems really so really <laughs> washroom and he can uh, <laughs> uh he can go to the washroom and he can use it for any activity he can uh, help uh, to uh sit uh, uh stand beside her wife and he can brush and he can do his a little daily whatever <laughs> All right. Also, thank you, Nadia. Thank you, Nadia, for that detailed description. Yes, um, I was coming into that uh, in a home setting. We will be able to see what is happening around, right? The, the patient's spouse may be with them. It will be a very calm and relaxed setting. You will see bright windows. You can see the patient's yard outside. So it will be a very relaxed and calm setting. So what I want you to go is do... Take a look at this picture. Do you see, what do you see? We see a patient who is very calm and relaxed and we see the nurse. This is clearly a home setting and it is very bright and sunny outside. So this will be the setting that you are talking into. So this is a very calm setting. So now we know what is the setting? What is the situation that we are talking into? But imagine if it's a very busy suburban urban clinic. It will be this. I'm sorry. I think I um, I just turned on my pen by mistake. I think I made two lines. I'm not able to remove that right now. Apologies for that. I guess I'll go ahead and talk and continue my session. Um, so imagine a suburban clinic. This looks like a suburban clinic. 
the nurse is in her uniform. We have the candidate, they are, uh, the patient, they're wearing the mask because obviously for safety reasons. And we also can see a coworker working behind. They're looking at the computer and it could be possibly a very noisy setting. So when you first look at your candidate's SKU card, the first thing that we have to understand is what the setting will be. So understanding the setting better will help you to set the tone of your noise, tone of your, sorry, tone of your voice and also communicate effectively to the candidate. So when you see the cue card, I request you, please don't go straight into the task, but understand what the setting is first. When you go into a home visit, we don't want the person, we don't want to introduce um, to the patient that, yes, I'm a nurse in this hospital. It is not a hospital, it is a home visit. So understanding that setting is very, very important. Now, next, let's go into understanding the background. That will be the next part of your uh, candidate cue card. Uh, as Nadia already said, um, you are visiting a 64 year old man or woman who underwent a total knee replacement three weeks ago. And this patient is reluctant to use a walker and a bit cranky. So it's not even the patient that calls the doctor, the nurse. It is her, so her spouse that called the hospital today requesting for a visit because the patient is not using the walker anymore. So that is the background. We understand the background. To better understand the background, you can even underline um, the important things in the cue card. You are, you'll be given a pen, a pen or a pencil at the time of your exam. So you can definitely um, underline. So here the important part is this is a 64 year old man or woman. So making the patient a man or a woman is up to you or and also based on the examiner sitting opposite to you. And also uh, the next part that we have to be careful is to understand that this person had a total knee replacement three weeks ago. So it is not an immediate situation. This person is currently recovering and the person is already discharged and was advised to use a walker. So we are underlining all the important part that is necessary. And here we know that the spouse is the one who is concerned about the health of the patient. So as I'm imagining this patient, I came across this picture, which slightly describes our patient um, in, this, in this cue card. If you look at this person, you can see that um, he is about 64 year old. It is a relaxed home setting, yes, but the patient looks a bit cranky. Maybe as we know that it is the person's, uh, patient's spouse who called the hospital. So the patient may not be even aware that there was a call made to the hospital. So now he looks surprised and a bit not very cooperative at all to the nurse. So that is the situation that we are getting into. And this is the kind of patient that we have to talk to. So what is important in this case is to establish that rapport, to have a good introduction and to calm down the patient and make him understand why we visited. What is the reason for the visit? Okay, okay I, I shared a few of these pictures to give you a bit of understanding about the situation that you'll be getting into. Now let's move on to the next step that is understanding the task. So we have these four pointers that we have to get into as we move into the speaking test. Uh, this is exactly the, what the role play is going to be. So if you look at the first words of the task, you see words like find, educate, persuade, explain. These are the different words that you see. And these are the actions that the examiner is looking for. These are the do words in your exam. So first, what you have to do is find out why the patient is refusing to use a walker and educate the person of the importance of using the walker. Persuade the patient to use a walker and explain the risk of why, what is going to happen if they are not using the uh, walker in the recovery phase. So these four keywords is very important. You have to go through all these during your conversation with the patient. You need not necessarily go in the same order. If you miss something, you can go back and talk about it. There's no issue with that, but make sure that you're covering it all. And also based on the answers of the uh, patient, you have to change your conversation based on the answers you get from the patient. I'm going to get into that in a bit, but let's look, take a look at the interlocutor's card. 
just like how we have a cue card, I'm sure you're all aware that the interlocutor or your examiner will also have a card. Uh, they also have a role to play. In most of the cases, it will be the patient, otherwise the patient's relative, spouse, mother, father, etc. So in this case, the patient's role is to be the patient. Um, sorry, the interlocutor's role is to be the patient. It is a 64-year-old man. Let's hope let's think that is a 64-year-old man. And if you look at the tasks for the patient and the interlocutor, the task for the, for the person who is taking the exam, that is you, will be to find, educate, persuade, and explain. At the same time, the task for the examiner, that is the patient, the acting patient, is to respond, become defensive, discuss your concern, and reluctantly agree to use a walker until you follow up. So, as you can see, uh, the words that I've underlined, they talk to each other. They relate to each other. So when you get the cue card itself, you would know that the examiner is not going to talk about anything else. They are just going to respond to the questions that you're asking. So you can kind of expect what the response that you're getting from the interlocutor. Because if, you're, if, you, if you see the second point, educate the patient of the importance of using the walker. There itself, you know, and you also read the background that the patient is reluctant to use the walker. That means they are going to get defensive. You already know that. So that is something that you have to expect as you go into the exam. Moving on to the next slide. So any questions so far, my friends? No, no ma'am, ma thank you. No, ma'am. It's no, clearly no, explaining, thank you. Awesome. So let's move on to the next few slides as well. Um, we are going to get a bit deeper into the speaking test. And in speaking test, you'll be mainly assessed on your language skills as well as your clinical skills. It's not just your English language that they're looking for. They are also looking for your clinical skills, otherwise also known as bedside manners. So we will get in detail uh, into the language skills, which involves effective communication. But before we get into that, I want to first talk about clinical skills. In terms of clinical skills, what is important is being attentive to the patient, being respectful and non-judgmental, and showing empathy. Let's see how we can do this. Being attentive means listening to the patient and answering exactly to their concerns. Being respectful means what? To be able to treat them with respect, right? For example, uh, in this case, if the patient's name is Smith, patient's last name is Smith, we are asking the patient, um, the, it's Mrs. Smith, isn't it? So we are asking the patient how we can address them. That is showing a respect. So we have to speak respectfully to the patient. It could be different when it comes to a, a different patient. Say for example, a 14 year old boy. The way you talk to a 14 year old boy and the way you talk to a 64 year old, uh, old person is different, right? So you have to see the situation first and uh, understand how you are going to communicate to this patient, what is going to be the tone of your language and also showing empathy. In this case, let's see if the patient says that, okay, uh, my leg is hurting a lot because I'm not able to use the walker properly. I don't think that is necessary, but without using the walker, it is just hurting my leg a lot. Even after following all the medications, my leg is hurting a lot. In this case, if the, if the patient is saying that, the first thing that you have to do is show empathy. What native speakers would do? They would say, they would apologize. Apology means it's not something that uh, they did, but they are just saying sorry to the patient that they're going through this. So immediately your response should be, I understand that and I'm so sorry to hear that you're going through this. That is a very effective way to show empathy. I know that the way we communicate in India or in other countries and the way native speakers speak are totally different. So if you are able to put in these small pointers into your exam, you will be able to get a good score. These, these are uh, the things that can get you good scores. All right. Now let's 
now that I spoke about the clinical skills, let's speak in, uh, deeper into the language skills. And this is what we'll be focusing on today's session. How effectively can you communicate? Uh, in terms of language skills, you will be assessed on the effectiveness of, of your communication with the patient. So there are a few steps that we have to follow. First thing is initiate the communication, initiate the conversation. So once you get the cue card, you will have about two to three minutes to prepare. And when the interlocutor tells you that, yes, you can start the test, you are the one who are initiating the test, even though it's a role play, don't wait for the other person to start. You are the one who is starting the test. So let's look at this example of the conversation. So the question, you are starting the conversation, Mrs. Smith, it's Mrs. Smith, isn't it? So as I said before, we are showing respect. We are asking the person whether we can address them as Mrs. Smith. That is a show, way of showing our respect. Fact. And in all cases, native speakers would only use the last name. We will never go by the first name unless we are very friends or familiar with the person. Otherwise, as a patient or if you're seeing the patient for the first time, we would always go by their last name. So in this case, we do not have a name for the patient, but you can imagine, right? It's up to you. You are the one driving the conversation. You are the master here. So you can drive the conversation. You can make the person Mr. Smith. Ms. Maria, you can make any name. So you can address a person by their name. That is a way of showing that, um, showing your warmth in terms of your communication. So we are starting with Mrs. Smith. It's Mrs. Smith, isn't it? And Mrs. Smith says, yes, that's correct. Perfect. Mrs. Smith, my name is Maria. I am the head nurse at the Community Health Clinic here at Peterborough. I have come to check on your progress and make sure that you're feeling okay. Would you mind if I ask a few questions? So if you look at the conversation of the nurse, you will see certain words like, say for example, in the third line, you will see perfect. Why do we say the word perfect? So this is something that native users would use. These are called discourse markers. Words like, well, all right, anyway. And in this case, Perfect. These are the discourse markers that we can use or put into our conversation. Uh, this is also um, something that the native speakers would very regularly use. So you can take a note of these discourse markers and try to put that into your conversation to make it look more natural and to give the conversation a flow. And also, if you see, you will see that the, the nurse is saying, I'm the head nurse at the community health clinic here at Peterborough. Why is the nurse saying the word Peterborough? Peterborough is a place name. I just put that name, place name over there. You can use any place name. Um, it's not necessary, but these are the additional things that you can add into your speaking test to make it look more natural. Say for example, your cue card never says that you are a health nurse in a place called Peterborough but you're just putting that word in there to make it look more natural. So if you're just saying, I'm a head nurse at the community health clinic, if the patient is seeing you for the first time, they do not know where you're from. They just know that they are, you are a nurse at the community health clinic. It could be any health clinic. What if the person doesn't trust you, right? But if you're able to put that place name in there, oh, this nurse is from my locality, this nurse is from my neighborhood, and the patient is more happy and more comfortable speaking to you, okay? So, and in the last sentence, if you see, would you mind if I ask a few questions? In this case, you're asking the patient's permission. This is also a way of showing respect. Native speakers value privacy a lot. So you, you just going them and asking them some questions would sometimes make them very uncomfortable. So it's always, always good to ask their permission. Would you mind if I ask a few questions? Do you mind if I take this from you? Do you mind if I see your ID? These kind of questions, you ask their permission as you go forward with the conversation. That is another very important thing that you can note as you initiate and get into the conversation. Moving on to the next slide. So after initiating the conversation, it is also our duty as the nurse to maintain the conversation. 
So if the conversation just ended awkwardly, the examiner or the patient, the acting patient is never going to start the conversation again. It is your duty to restart the conversation and maintain the conversation. So it shouldn't feel like you're asking questions one by one from the card that you have, right? Even though you have to ask all the questions, it shouldn't feel like you are asking the questions one by one like an interview. It is not an interview. It, it should be a continuous flow, comfortable, relaxing conversation. So that's why I said at the beginning, you have to listen and respond. Listen to the patient first, and based on what the patient is saying, you have to respond. Let's take a look at an example in the next slide. So just quickly go through this conversation, and can anyone tell me what is the issue with this exercise? this conversation. Do you see any problems with this conversation? Increase the mobility of the patient. Okay. Any other answers? The patient is asking me not responding to patients, but nurse is responding regarding exercise. Exactly. Thank you, Ambly. So here the patient is telling that I've been very religious with my medications, but it feels like a lot. I don't want to take so many medicines. And the nurse is not listening to the, what, what, what the patient is saying. The nurse is next saying that, now let's talk about exercise. The, the candidate may have said this because the next pointer in their cue card is about exercise. But if the patient is talking about their medications, you should never go and go into the next pointer without addressing the patient's current concern. Let's take a look at how this conversation should ideally go like. So I'm gonna take, do a quick read through of this conversation. And the patient is saying, I've been religious with my medications. However, it feels like a lot. And the nurse says, I understand that it must be hard for you. But on the bright side, you're now feeling much better, isn't it? Yes, of course, no doubt about that. I'm glad to hear that. Now that we discussed about your progression with medication, let's move on and talk about exercise. So in this case, the nurse has empathized with the patient. See, I understand that it must have been hard for you. So the nurse is empathizing with the patient that yes, they had to take the lot of medications. But again, the nurse is trying to brighten up them by saying that on the bright side, you see that you're feeling much better, isn't it? You won't be uh, having to take this medicine again for a long time. You're already feeling better. So you kind of continued that conversation and the patient is happy. Look at that. Yes, of course, no doubt about that. I'm feeling better. The patient is already happy. And the nurse is using another uh, sentence to continue that conversation that says, I'm glad to hear that. So this is also something the native speakers would use. They always, always uh, have connect to the previous uh, conversation or the previous sentence that the patient used to continue and move on to the next one. In this case, you could have just said, after the patient said, yes, of course, no doubt about that. You could have just said, now that we discussed about your progress with medication, let's move on to talk about exercise. Instead, they are, the nation is again acknowledging that the patient is feeling better. The nurse is again acknowledging that, oh, I'm glad to know that you're feeling better already. And then moving on to the next step. So this is how you maintain and continue the conversation. You always keep a link to the previous discussion that you had with the patient in the next sentence. This will, this will give a continuity to the conversation and will make sense to the examiner that yes, you are able to maintain and continue a conversation. Is this clear to everybody about how you maintain and continue a conversation? Yes, ma'am. Yes, yes, yes. yes, it's clear. Awesome. Now, the next thing, the third thing that you have to be very careful when you come into um, communicating effectively is about asking open questions. Can anyone tell me what an open question is or what a closed question is? Close to question, always there will be a sorrow. Awesome, awesome. 
everyone's familiar with that and glad to know that. So, yes, awesome. So closed questions will always have yes or no answers. Open questions will open the platform for the patient to talk about the, your question more. That will help also in maintaining conversation. If you look at this conversation, uh, we are continuing our previous conversation with the patient. Now that we discussed about the progress with medication, let's move on and talk about exercise. And here the nurse asks a question, do you exercise regularly? And the patient says, yes. And that is a closed question and there ends the conversation. And now the nurse has to find another thing to talk about, right? But if this would have been a, an open question, let's see how the conversation would have gone. See, the nurse is asking, let's move on and talk about exercise. How often do you exercise? Now that is an open question and the patient speaks more than just yes or no. Well, every other day, I guess, sometimes I speak, skip on a weekend. So now we know that the patient exercises every other day and sometimes they sp skip on the weekend. They don't exercise on the weekend. Now you have something to talk about because the patient was supposed to exercise every single day of their recovery. And you know that now we can talk about that. You have something to talk about. So that is why it's very important to ask open questions. So the fourth thing You have to be careful is about you have to it's related to these exercises that you were given. You can always let me know. The nurse is telling the patient that you can always let me know if you have any issue. And the next question that she gets is, how can I contact you? Is there a telephone number? And when you first suddenly hear telephone number, oh, what do I say? Just don't get stuck there. You can just randomly say anything. There's no right or wrong here. So you can say, oh yes, of course. The telephone number is 888-555-431. Just say anything. But you have to be very careful that you have to uh, respond to this question based on the situation. Say, for example, it's a bedridden patient and is asking for your phone number. Just telling the phone number doesn't make sense, right? They're not able to write it down. They are not able to record it anywhere. So you have to say, okay, uh, what I can do is I can email the contact to your spouses or your caretakers email flyer with you that has a phone number into our community health clinic. And you can always contact us, there's no problem with that. And I'll be available from this time to this time. That will be a very good way of responding to an unexpected question. So be always ready for an unexpected question, but at the same time, uh, don't, um, don't feel shocked at that time, don't feel surprised. Just say anything. There's nothing right or wrong. You are driving the conversation. Always, always remember, you are driving the conversation. Next slide. So the fifth thing that you have to be careful in terms of communicating effectively is to organize the consultation or organize the conversation that you're having into different stages. For example, first we've had the introduction, right? We introduced ourselves to Mrs. Smith. We've already gone to that slide. Let's take about 10 seconds for that. And reviewing the background. After introducing to the patient that yes, I'm the head nurse at this community clinic, we can say that uh, I've been told that you've been having some issues with using walker or you've been having some issues in terms of your um, leg pain or medications or things like that. You can review the background. What is the patient's background that you read in the cue card? You can review that. You can say that again in 30 seconds just to start the conversation so that the patients start talking about their concern. Okay, and the next step will be the next uh, step to organize your communication with patient will be to complete the tasks, other questions that you have given in three to four minutes. We already discussed about that. And the final step, will be to summarize your actions. Now, this is not mandatory if you want, if you have extra time. So if you have gone through all the tasks and you still have like 30 or 45 seconds left, you can summarize actions. 
it is always good to do that. It is always good to finish a bit early, say 30 or 45 seconds before and do the summary of action, but don't worry if you're not able to do it also. Let's see how we can summarize your actions. Let's quickly read through this conversation. Thank you for meeting with me today, Mrs. Smith. Let's go, let's quickly go over what we talked about. As I mentioned before, it is very important that you continue using the walker until your next appointment. Sounds good. So this is the summary of the action. We mainly talk about, you can, um, based on the pointers that you have, based on the tasks you have, you can add more things into your summary. This is just an example. I've only mentioned about the usage of walker. You may have already talked about medication or rehabilitation and other things. If that is the case, you can include all that in the summary. So let's uh, let's uh, cut this conversation open and see what is uh, the nurse telling Mrs. Smith. So as a summary, to start the summary, they're saying, let's quickly go, to, go over what we talked about. That is, instead of saying, let's sum summarize what we just discussed, right? It's a better way of saying, let's quickly go over what we talked about just now. And also using the words like, as I mentioned before, as I told before, is referring to your previous conversation. So that will help the patient connect the summary that you're saying to the previous conversation you had. So using words like, as I mentioned before, or as I told already, this kind of things can be included in a summary. And also using the word sounds good at the end. That's not something that we regularly use in our conversation, right? But native speakers use this very, very often. So if you feel like after asking somebody a question, um, sounds good, conveys the meaning, is that okay? Are you okay with it? Do you understand what I just meant? Um, this is the meaning that the word sounds good conveys. So if you add it at the end of a conversation, um, that is just asking the patient, are you okay with this? Um, did you understand what I meant? So that is also another important discourse marker that you can take a note of and use in your conversation. All right. Now, after summarizing, just before wrapping up, we can ask one final question. Is there anything else I can help you with today? Or do you have any other questions? These are the kind of questions that you can ask for that one final question. This will, um, this is just a way of um, showing respect or uh, showing the nurse's concern or showing the nurse's responsibility that if the patient has any other additional concern, it can be talked about right now. But in your case, in the during the exam, there won't be, because you have covered all the tasks, there definitely won't be any other additional questions. Uh, but if the examiner asks you any questions, definitely go ahead and answer that. But it also totally based on the time that you have left. Uh, if you have some time left, you can definitely go ahead and ask this question. Is there anything else I can help you with today? Or do you have any other question? That is, that can be one final question in your conversation after summarizing. Moving on to the second last slide in our conversation is how you conclude a conversation. So as we said, we are asking one final question. Do you have any other questions today? And the patient would say, no, no questions. But in, in here, if they ask any questions, please make sure that you're responding to them. And after that, well then, feel better soon, Mrs. Smith. And Mrs. Smith says, Thank you, enter the rest of your day or have a good one. And nurse says, you as well. This is also a kind of uh, conversation discourse markers that the native speakers use. Let's cut this open and see the different words that I've used here. Well then, well then is also a discourse just like how I said, all right, perfect. This kind of words are this course, uh, one of those markers. So a good way of concluding a conversation to somebody who is not feeling well, right? And in this conversation, especially, it is um, a recovering patient and it is a very relaxed home setting. So this is a very uh, appropriate way of uh, concluding a conversation. And Mrs. Smith says, thank you. Enjoy the rest of your day. 
but it's also a usage that native speakers would use. Instead of enjoy the rest of your day, you can use have a good one. That is also another usage to end, um, uh, like to end your conversation with somebody. Uh, but you have to be very careful in using these two because if it is an emergency setting or if it's an urban, very busy uh, suburban clinic where the patient is not feeling well at all, you shouldn't be using this. You shouldn't be telling someone that is feeling very sick that enjoy the rest of your day. How are they going to enjoy the rest of their day, right? So you have to be very careful when you use this. If it's a home setting, it is very ideal to use it. And the nurse responds, you as well. We sometimes mainly use the word you too. We use that. And you as well is also another way of um, wishing them the best as well. Just like how they wished you a good day, you're also wishing them a good day. So you as well is also another marker that you can keep in mind to use in your conversations. So that was the conclusion of our conversation. So uh, if you want, I can quickly go over and uh, go over each of these pointers once again. Okay, so the main thing that you have to be careful when it comes to um, effectively communicating is first, initiate the conversation, maintain the conversation, ask open questions, respond to anything unexpected, organize your conversation into different stages, summarize ask questions, ask that final question if needed and conclude so this is one of the uh, this is one of the effective way to organize your consultation with a patient your exam uh, and that is the end of my presentation today and i will open the platform for any questions it was informative further and it is very helpful session properly I mean, I mean, reluctant uh, cases. So this case also, I read that reluctant uh, patient is reluctant to that. So like that way is uh, whatever we are asking patient uh, hesitate to answer our questions. So how will manage our, that situation? All right, good question. The hospital. So what is important to, uh, first talk to a reluctant patient is to establish that rapport. That's why I use the words like um, addressing them. Can I address you this way? And asking the patient's permission, would you be able to um, help me with this? Or can we go through some of your concerns? Asking the patient that question and always asking that permission to them, right? That will, that will kind of be your their permission respectfully, but at the same time, so always asking permission is very important when it comes to a cranky or reluctant patient. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Namita, that you have spared your time uh, in front of us in today. So today, Sunday, maybe we, uh, we may have some other kind of uh, responsibility to school. In spite of all those things, you have spared your time with us in sharing your uh, things to us about speaking. It really helped us, helped us to understand uh, the different categories that we spoke today, especially your uh, language skills, how, uh, how, how the native speaker uh, will coordinate, uh, how the native speaker will speak the natural words, the discourse markers, what they will use. All these things it really helped us and it, uh, it has given an eye-opening eye -opening session for us. And we can able to jot down some of the points what you have told. Thank you so much. Thank you for your. Uh, I would like to say like uh, thank you for this valuable time that uh, you and that ma'am also gave, so that we could understand many things about speaking, the speaking session. So it was a good session, I would say. Uh, Mrs. Uh, Elizabeth, um, very happy to be uh, to be a part of this uh, session. A really an, an amazing session it was because uh, uh, the step-by-step -step structural explanation we really enjoyed it and uh, I have got a clear picture about the speaking um, speaking uh, subtest um, actually I am a beginner but I I could say I have got a really picture a good picture about that and uh, 
thank you so much for this to the father and uh, uh, our admin panel as well thank you ma'am um, elizabeth actually it was a very good experience for me uh, especially i could learn something how the you mean uh, sorry i mean you have explained us that how the natives uh, native speakers will listen to us how they will answer to us back that means it was a wonderful section especially you have said well then uh, previously i knew it's only a well so if i add more well then you as well these are uh, new things for me i think it is a, a new information for me what you have learned what you have taught me today thank you very much great i'm so great, glad great. you found it helpful um i would just like to add that as i moved to canada first these were the words that i also was surprised about right i did not know any of these words as once i was new in canada but now i learned uh, a few of them that's why i wanted to share that knowledge with each one of you because i know that you're moving into a new country i'm really glad to know that you found it helpful you're welcome thank Nadia. you thank you father for a good section it was an amazing class the section is a help in everyone and i never attended in this class never in this type of class uh, i i never attended he is very impressed and um, my motivated for uh, learning for uh, speaking i have um, was an amazing class father uh, thank you so much for the section both of you namita and father and all the admin panel actually uh, i know something about speaking but to uh, how to maintain the conversation how to from one task to another how to go uh, she explained well and uh, some of the things what is the native speakers are using that is also very uh, new for me and it was very informative clearly she explained well everything thank you so much it was a wonderful session uh, i would like to thank uh father and mrs namida uh, the ses uh, session was wonderful uh, we can understand uh, the subtest uh, speaking is very well uh, she explained uh, the all the um, steps all the uh, uh, information step by step uh, then um, we can understand very well uh, thank you thank you ms uh, nimida and thank you father good evening ms nimida your section was incredible it was very informative uh, you started in the beginning how to start a role play uh, then how to uh, lead the role play and how to organize the role play uh, then how to conclude the role play and uh, what are the native speakers is using the weights uh, Uh, while they are talking it was very informative thank you for uh, thank you for your this incredible class and uh, thank you father for arranging this section for us especially for the beginners but it was informative for the advanced learners as well thank you so much you're welcome uh, yeah. first day i'm attending this session i just came to know uh, this uh, uh, regarding edu, edu skills through uh, youtube i was i have watched two two three videos and uh, today is the first day is my session it was amazing and i i am the first um, i am the beginner i didn't attend any classes and all first time i am attending it was a wonderful class thank you so much hello father and namita it was really a good, wonderful section do i attended many speaking classes before but it was the first day i got a clear picture about how to handle the situation how to empathize the patient especially if they are asking anything that is uh, unexpected from the task so it was really a good section and i also know that uh, how to handle the situation very clearly and how to conclude the session so it's a really a wonderful section i would like to say thank you to father and uh, snavida uh, as we this is uh, my first class also attending in the uh, speaking session and uh, i am uh, very happy because uh, she uh, explained well the classes how to open a conversation how how we can maintain it how can how we can progress the conversation and how can we we can conclude it and uh, we got a clear 
as we got a very clear picture how to uh, speak in the so much uh, for getting us uh, for giving us this opportunity to uh, say uh, to speak also okay, thank you father thank you namita yes I yeah i appreciate your attitude and everybody was so attentive the platform was platform was full and i know many of you have taken leave to attend this session great and the way you are attending i appreciate your interest and your focus and the disciplined uh, attention given to the session thank you hi namita i'm jalaja uh, i take this opportunity to express my gratitude on behalf of idu skills uh, i all of them were told that it was excellent mar it's i think marvelous i didn't hear wonderful uh, it was informative so i don't have any other words to say uh, how the session was so uh, by this time you might have came to know how much uh, the edu skills aspirants have earned from uh, you right so uh, may god bless you uh, i will expect many classes from you uh, let god bless you to come again to uh, help our um, aspirants and you are a good motivator for everyone not only for me or each one of us so we will uh, remember you whenever we start speaking uh, practice so what all the points you have mentioned uh, step by step each line by was noticing that is line by line you were explain uh, you are explaining very well so uh, as i told you before uh, whenever our aspirants start to practice i of course they will remember you and they will uh, they might have noted down all the points and they will uh, see in advance before starting the practice uh, so uh, so i express my gratitude on behalf of father and all the id uh, skill family and thank you father for your um, i don't have word what word i will tell uh, your support and guidance uh, for the id uh, skill aspirants okay so let, may god bless you with uh, with all his abundance father thank you thank you so much uh, this is very uh, um, informative class um, i am giving a special thanks to uh, namita uh, from canada uh, we are expecting more class uh, from you in future uh, uh, actually in the uh, in this class uh, we got some uh, new new words uh, for uh, for this as i am just one native expressions people are mostly using so that is very, uh, much more uh, informative for all uh, newcomers those who are watching this video i am saying special thanks to father also for conducting this uh, big platform for um, for arranging all those things without expecting any uh, any profit from anyone so i am showing my gratitude to this platform thank you good evening yeah. father and good evening edu yes. teams yes my name yes. is vimal i am from saudi arabia actually i didn't i have no idea about the oit and i never attract to oit and i i, ne I never think i i will attend the oit class in future so one of my friend told me that uh, uh, how long you will be stay in saudi how to move on other countries you you, you, you just try your luck in oit and uh, he provided me the link and the, the he talked about the father and uh, he told me that the father will uh, teach you very well you go to the youtube link uh, he provided me the one week ago but i never go through the link but today i just go through the link and i just saw the whatsapp number there i just uh, message the father father i am just my name is vimal and took response from the father and he provided the zoom link and i was i was lucky it was the correct time of the starting of the class so as a beginner uh, i just attend the class i never get bored and the the way of class and way of teaching and all the things make me confident and uh, now i would like to think more about oit and i would like to say thank you father and all the team 
And now I would like to decide that I will uh, tie my neck in poetry and uh, definitely I can win. And thank you, Father, and thank you to all the team, um, especially Mam Namita. Good evening, Father, and good evening, Madam. Uh, now I am in duty. I am from uh, Kuwait. Um, I'm very glad to hear the class because it was something uh, very friendly. It's uh, she like she's speaking in uh, Malayalam that much. Uh, easily get her words one by one, and she explained beautifully from all the words line by line, and it's amazing, Father. And uh, we we expect more classes from here. And uh, I, I, I am because I am a beginner. Father is doing a fantastic job. I I, I can't uh, say even words. If I would see you, <laughs> I, I can't show my gratitude because once I I desire, I once we will meet, Father. So you yeah. are very teaching. Uh, we are very teaching. It's heart touching. So no words to say. And uh, ma'am, it's so beautiful class and so informative. And uh, Father, thanks for all. So, um, thank oh, you so great. much. Sir. Okay, my name is Jibin K. Sebastian. Uh, yeah. First of all, uh, I would like to say thank God because uh, uh, this was a God decision to come here uh, in this platform. So, uh, a big thank you for uh, Father for a wonderful platform and all uh, dedicated uh, admin panels. And again, uh, thank you, uh, Namida, for the wonderful section. Uh, Actually, uh, uh, you, it was a, a home setting, uh, so uh, you uh, taught us uh, how to start a, a speaking section in a home setting uh, and how to structure and how to um, uh, organize our uh, uh, task. So, and um, I, we got uh, uh, many members uh, told already, so we got uh, some uh, new words. Uh, so, uh, like, uh, yes, as you will. So, um, like, uh, so uh, thank you, Namida. Uh, anyway, um, and uh, you taught us how to uh, how to complete our task. And uh, so, it was a wonderful section. And uh, thank you all. Thank you, Father. Thank you very much. I, how, I don't know how to speak because the plan, the, this is the first plan, plan, platform I am speaking. Because today is the first class, I uh, I got information from my friend, and it was the class was very informative for me. Thank you all. Good evening, Father and Namida, ma'am. First of all, I want to say thank you. Thank you so much. It was an amazing class. Uh, I am a OET beginner, uh, so I got an uh, idea about uh, speaking section, especially um, understanding the setting, background, and task. Uh, so I'm so uh, thankful. Thank you so much for me, uh, and thank you, Namida Ma'am. And uh, as a beginner, it is very, uh, very. Uh, what I what I have to tell, very help for me because uh, I am a beginner in this platform, and uh, I am listening her uh, accent. To, uh, what she is speaking, I am listening her accent. That also very amazing. And once again, I want to tell thank uh, for uh, Father and uh, the admin panel. Thank you, Father. I think we can conclude. Thanks a lot, and definitely, you know, all of these people have taken notes, and they have you have ingrained in their minds. Maybe they are very fresh. Majority of them are very fresh to OED, and definitely on YouTube they will watch again, and thousands will watch and benefit from your session. We cannot uh, go on to more number in the sessions, live sessions, so we will upload the videos and others will benefit from that as well. And it's a great time. Definitely God will bless you. I know that is pain you have taken to prepare the slides and prepare the slots and weekend, you know, Sunday with your hectic schedule you have dedicated for these people. And God will reward you for all these uh, sacrifices and we pray for you. May God bless you. As somebody clearly put it, since it is a first session for many of them, definitely they will remember you. OET will be just uh, tagged with your face and you with your English. Yeah. So definitely they will pray for you as well. And we have a prayer group as well. We will remember you in our prayer groups. Thank you so Thank much. You, and every, 
this way people i would also like to say thank you thank you very much everybody for having me i am so glad to be here and i'm so so happy to see the enthusiasm in this group and it was i'm so so happy to see that um you are finding my session helpful um so i hope to join soon thank you so much god bless you see you all friends bye bye thank you father thank you father thank you father